golden glow upon the green below. Butterflies dance in the radiance of the day. Bees like the flowers more than you do, so don't get too close. I don't like the summer. Don't get me wrong, I love the sun, but only in the daytime, because a warm day means a warm night, and a warm night means no sleep, and no sleep means a grumpy pee, and we don't want that. <laughs> so, I think I found a solution to this problem. What I want to do is create something called a swamp caller. Now, there's nothing really special about the design of these things, but they are effective. The problem is that they're often missold as something called a personal air conditioner. Don't believe these lies. That's rubbish. There's no condition of the air involved. It is effectively just ice cubes in a box with a fan on it. So you get cool air blown in your direction. Now, what is a swamp caller and why is yours different? I hear you cry. Now, there's some very good questions. Effectively, as I say, a swamp caller is just a box of ice with a fan attached to it. Nothing very special. However, these boxes are usually pretty big and the fans are gone and are pretty noisy. So my solution to this is, well, firstly, a smaller box, something that can go on a desk or a bedside cabinet. But first of this, we've got a nice and quiet computer fan that you can make even quieter using a fan speed controller. But the other problem is that the ice that usually goes in the swamp cooler is just straight out of a freezer. Now the problem with this is when it melts, you get loads of moisture in the air that leads to condensation and various other things like that. It's not very nice. So my solution is these plastic ice cubes. When they melt, they release a little bit of moisture, but nowhere near as bad as the other options out there. What I'm making today is just a proof of concept because it's absolutely roasting and I wouldn't mind a solution for tonight. Because of that, it's all made out of items they either got around the home or bought down the local store. If you've got any ideas on how I might be able to improve this, then please do let me know in the comments because I'd love to redesign this in the future. If you'd like to make this though today, then you'll need a little bit of electronics knowledge. Nothing much, it's just a difference between your positives and negatives. So, let's start this. What we need first is, well, your box. The only thing that we'll note is the lid has to be the same, uh, or same width as your fan, so that when you put it together, it's all gonna fit. On the subject of the fan, make sure you get one as wide as possible, because the wider the fan, the slower speed you require to get the same airflow as a smaller fan, which means it's gonna be quieter. This one is just a 12 centimeter fan that I got from a computer. I already know that it's a nice and quiet fan. I also got this fan speed controller. It's not really essential because the fan's already quiet. However, it means that you can get things even quieter if needed, and it's something that I already had laying around the home. If you need to get one, there are a couple of quid off eBay, or maybe, I don't know, four or five pounds on the local computer store if you're in a bit of a rush. One of the main components for this is ice. Now these are just some plastic ice cubes that I got from Poundland. It's basically just a really cheap store that sells odds and ends in England, if you're not familiar with it. I actually got four packs of these, um, two of the ones in the bags, which I think are probably a little bit easier because it means you can easily take them in outside the box. But uh, they only had a couple in store, so I also got these ones that have to come in a tube. They're all loose. Uh, it's not ideal, so if you find the ones in the bags, go for those. But in the end, they're all the same price and they'll do the same thing. You'll also need a power supply to get the fan working. This is one I just got from an old Netgear router. It's nothing really special. 12 volts, 1 amp. It's a complete overkill for the fan, but in the end it was free, so I'm not really complaining. You might have one of these laying around at home already, so it's always worth checking. Is that there? As I say, this is just a proof concept. So I'm using this little DC socket that I got off eBay. It was 99p, and it means that I don't have to chop any plugs off. What it does is it allows me to plug in the power supply on one end and it's got two little termination points so I can use the little jumper wires that I've got. So these are the wires that I'm going to be using to put everything together. They're just little jumper leads that I got from an electronics kit. It means that I don't have to chop any cables apart so this is what I'm going to be using. Now we've got all our items, we just need a couple of tools and accessories to put everything together. What I'm going to be using is a multi-tool for all the cutting. You could just use a normal hobby knife, it might just take a little bit longer. I've also got the trusty old glue gun. This is just, well, for sticking all the items together. Alongside that, I'm going to be using some electrical tape. Now, you might not need this. I'm just using it because of the jumper leads that I'm using. They might slide out in short. However, if you do this project properly, you won't need that. <laughs> I've also got a CD or a DVD and a dry wipe pen. This will all make sense in a minute. Let's start this by drawing around our CD, or in this case DVD. This is where the fan's going to be. 
Now, after we draw around this, um, we're just going to wipe off that black marker pen. So that's why it's always good to use a dry wipe pen. Now, this CD is around about 12 centimeters in diameter, which is the same as the fan that I'm using. And actually, for your fan, if you could just find something which is about the same diameter, I think we'll all be good. So, now we've drawn around the CD or DVD. We just need to cut that out with the rotary tool and we're good to go. Now we're going to cut the hole out of lid and I'm going to be using goggles for this because I'm not too sure if you're supposed to when cut in plastic, but better safe than sorry, right? So the objective here is to actually cut about half a centimetre inside the circle, maybe even more, because the fan diameter is a little bit less than the CD. Not by much, but you know, once again, better safe than sorry. So let's start this. I've got a better idea, I'm going to use a different attachment than this, this is going to take forever. Turns out I couldn't find the cutting tool I was looking for, so it's back to this. Yeah! <laughs> it's going to take ages. I probably would have been better off with a hobby knife now I think about it. Anyway, I'll uh, quickly fast forward. And looking at the time code, it's taken me about four minutes to get through two thirds of it. Great. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it around and carry on the other side now. So if you actually got the right tools, this is probably quite a quick job. <laughs> One poorly cut circle. <laughs> nice. I'm probably going to have to reduce it down in size a little bit, but um, I guess it's a start. Oh, let's put the fan on and see. Okay, so actually I could get away with probably about another half a centimetre or so. Yeah, I was definitely a bit uh, conservative with the first cut. So, back to the drill. Fun, fun, fun. Round two, done. Now let's check it out with a fan. That's all right. I could do a little bit more, but no, <laughs> no, no more cutting. Um, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. All right, so now we cut a hole in the lid, it's on to the next step. Okay, next step, we need to mount the fan onto the lid, and I think I've got the solution. What I'm gonna do is use this old screwdriver that I think I got from a Christmas cracker and I'm going to use it just to mark where the holes are going on the lid. So, idea, I don't know if you can see it on the camera there. I'm literally just going to push the drill for the hole, turn it around a couple of times just so I get some sort of indentation knowing where to drill. All right, that seems to have worked, but the proof is in the pudding. So I'm gonna cut all the holes and then we're going to see if it actually fits the fan to the lid. So this fan comes with these little rubber screws. They uh, should reduce any sort of vibration and noise. And they look to fit. Good times. Now we just need to mount the fan to the lid. Now when I got this fan, it came with these little rubber screws. It helps reduce vibration and once again reduce the noise. So perfect for this project. Now, we've got to make sure that when looking at the fan, it will say which way it blows and which way it sucks. So, make sure it blows air into the box. That's the plan. So, what we're going to do is just pop the screws in through here. Once again, I'll just cut on the camera. So, uh, you don't need to see me putting in all four screws. Unless it goes drastically wrong, and then you might want to see that. It might do actually, I might have cut the holes incorrectly. Uh, no, no, it's going alright. Now this is the other great thing about rubber screws, they're very forgiving. <laughs> it's exactly what I need right now. There we go. Lovely, I've got the fan mounted to the lid. Step one done. Now we get to the cabling part. I'm afraid to say I don't completely understand it, but if you bear with me, I have tried this and I know it works. So, 
On the little uh, power socket here, the negative line is a red cable and the positive line is a yellow. Now I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, it's actually just because it's the only cable I had in the house. So the negative, that goes to the ground on the speed controller, makes sense. The yellow, um, that goes to the positive, or I think actually this might be some sort of sense connection on the speed controller, not too sure on that. Anyway, exiting it, we have the ground, which goes to the ground on the fan, and then we have the red, that goes to the yellow on the fan. Now, this is a four pin fan. It may slightly differ on a three pin if that's what uh, you have at home. Okay, and now we're just going to glue gun everything together. It's a bit of a bodge, as I say. It's just, you know, just to test things out. So, let's see. What we're going to do is put the fan on there. Wow, it's looking professional already, isn't it? He <laughs> lies. Speed controller. I think that could just go on the side. I tried taking just the speed controller off, I thought it would be easier just to have a little control knob on there. But I couldn't get this off for the life of me. I'm sure they just pull. I don't think there's any sort of screw on them. But it um, wasn't working. Either I'm particularly weak, can achieve this task, or that's just completely set on there. So Anyway, what I'm going to do is actually, how do I want to mount this? Um, yeah, this thing with glue guns is they're nice and forgiving, so I think I'm just going to mount it straight on there with nothing, nothing particularly special. Oh, that looks crap. Let's see if I can put that on the camera. Wow, I've just smudged it trying to move it over to the camera. This is probably the worst looking thing I've ever made. <laughs> That is horrific. It's like some sort of DIY nightmare. It's time for another bodge. I'm bringing out the tape. This one is just going to wrap all the cables together. So. As long as I keep telling myself it's a proof of concept, it's okay. I hope no one else sees this. Oh wait, I'm putting it on YouTube. Everyone's going to see this and it's... They're going to be ashamed on my behalf, I think. <laughs> Alright, as long as it works though, that's the main thing. Now for the last thing. Probably should have done this a bit earlier, but I've just remembered it. So, I'll remove the lid for that. What I want to do is just drill a few little holes to let the air through. This is going to be the cool air which you know, blows into your face. So, what we need to do is get out the multi-tool again and I put my goggles on, cut out some holes, and then we'll chuck some ice in, I think we're good to go. But this is no real design consideration. I'm just gonna cut some holes which allow air to blow towards you. Let's go for this. All right, this plastic's a lot harder. I'm gonna try something else. Right, new option. I'm using a sanding knife. This whole thing just looks awful, but, you know, it should do the trick. Oh. The idea behind the squares is that it won't be big enough for the ice cubes to fall out of, but just about big enough for me <laughs> to crack the box. Wow, that looks awful. <laughs> this is really terrible, the whole thing. It's just all falling apart. But um, I'm sure the one you'll make will look a lot better. Like I say, this is just something that, proof of concept, I'm curious to any other ideas you may have on how to design this. Probably not use a standing knife to cut through a plastic box with brittle plastic, like that. Otherwise it just looks like a really crappy house that you just made. Well, you haven't made, I've made. <laughs> um, I think if I carry on with this, it's probably just going to shatter completely. So I'll make one last sort of long rectangle with the uh, multi-tool here and then we should all be good. This is a perfect example of doing something when you don't have the right tool for the job. It takes ages and things break. So if you're doing this, I recommend using one of those little metal discs that go on a rotary tool. That should just glide straight through this plastic. Don't use one of these. This is awful. It's, um, I don't know, just like a little metal cutting tool. It's um, grooved edges. Probably has a name. I don't know what it is. Um, anyway, back onto this. 
Like I said, I'll just make one more rectangle and then I'll call it a day because it's taken forever. I might be wrong, but I figured I could just score a line and then use the standing knife. Hopefully it won't crack around the rest of the box, it just cut across the line. That's the theory. Now, will this happen? Alright. Looks like the answer's gonna be no. Okay, I won't carry on with that. Let's get back to this. I hate that rot rotary tool thing, it's really rubbish this box. So, yes, I have gone back to the standing knife. I know it's not the best idea, but yeah. Considering I've ruined the box already, it doesn't really matter. Prepare yourself for this awful magnum opus I've created. Wow. It looks like some sort of really disappointed alien. Why did you create me? Well, I don't know if that would be an alien, but whatever it is, it's disappointed in its creation. Feels like something that would have come out of a bench time or something. Why did you make me creator? I probably about two people in the world will probably get that reference, because I don't think I've even said it right. Anyway, <laughs> let's see. Now in theory, once again, fan works, great. Let's pop the ice in and see how it goes. Firstly, let's we'll start by pouring all these loose ice cubes, I think. Now, when I got these, I just thought I'd get as many as possible. Well, enough to fill up the box anyway. Now, I think about it, I possibly could have gone for another bag. So, that's alright. Cut those off though, I don't need those. Let's see. I'm almost excited actually. Will this work? Well, I'll tell you what, that's really good. Feels really nice. Let's turn it up. Let's get some proper air blowing up. Ooh, nice and frosty. It's like opening up your freezer. That's actually really nice. I like that. So, yeah. Tell you what, I'm going to get a thermometer on this and we'll actually see how cold this is getting. Right now, even on this video, it's freezing my balls literally just stand in it. So, clearly it's doing something. Uh, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with that. Nice. I'm back in my room and I can't wait to try out the cooler. I think I'm going to leave it on for about an hour or so first, just to see if it's safe enough to leave on overnight. But what really interests me is how much difference in temperature it really makes. So I've got a thermometer, which is currently measuring 23.4 degrees C, which is pretty hot for England at night. So this should be a lifesaver. It's also measuring about 52% humidity right now. Let's see on that camera. So it's uh, reasonably humid, but more than anything, this is a warm night for England. So let's power this up and see how it goes. Back to the crazy creation. Like I say, it does look awful, but it's a proof concept and I'm really pleased with it because, listen, this is how quiet it is. It's not even registering on the uh, mic there. Can you hear that? <laughs> You're more likely to hear people speaking downstairs, actually. It's pretty quiet. I'll turn it all the way up and see if you can hear it then. Still not too bad actually, and it's definitely blown out a lot of cold air. So let's see this on the thermometer. It's on full power, so it's freezing my hand, that's for sure. I've got to say, it actually feels cold in its registering, so I don't know if that's subliminal or some sort of evaporative cooling going on, but um. It's um, a different temperature, that's for sure, than what it was showing earlier. So I'm really pleased with the design in that it actually works. 
feels a lot cooler in here than it was, say, five, ten minutes ago. So that's great. But I have noticed that the ice cubes have started to melt just a little bit. So I don't know how this will last in a couple of hours' time. I guess I'll find out. I would say that, well, not only is it a pretty ugly contraption, but there's already a few things that I can think of that may actually improve it. Firstly, put an insulation around it, because I've seen some swamp coolers are in some sort of insulative box, and that would probably help quite a lot. I'm also thinking, rather than just cutting out little squares and things like that, I might just use some fan grills, because it's a lot easier to add into the design. Also, if um, you have one giant hole for the lid, and you, I've just noticed that if something pokes through, it jams up the fan. I don't know if that would be like a fire hazard or anything, but it's probably not going to help the fan's lifespan. So that's something I might change in the future. Um, I'm thinking also the direction of air could be changed as well. Perhaps even through having something simple like, I don't know, I say like a plastic bottle that's cut in half. You can then angle it using two little brackets. So that's maybe a possibility. But if you've got any other ideas, then please do let me know. As I say earlier, just leave a comment. And I will do some additions in the future because I'd love to see how this develops. I hope you like this video and this project. Please let me know if you built this or something similar because I'd love to know. I'm also planning to build more things in the future because I love making things. If you'd love to see this, then please also let me know. In the meantime, though, have a brilliant day and I'll catch you later. This has been running for just under three hours now and the ice is fully melted. But probably what's worth noting is how little condensation is actually built up. In fact, if this was ice out of the freezer, it would probably be about a third away full right now and would have leaked out that grill. So, plastic ice cubes, the win.